This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Guess what? Really special here on a given Tuesday after Christmas on the one o'clock block. We're following up. That's really important. We've we got to follow up. There's two kinds of people in the world, you know, the, the ones who follow up and the others. Today, we're following up with Roger Epstein. He's in New York now. We talked to him before the tax bill was passed. The tax reform bill was passed. And now we're getting together with him again to see what happened, to follow up with him. It's really interesting. So, Roger, welcome back to the show. It's so nice to have you here for this discussion. Thanks, Jay. Always great to be with you. Yeah. So, big question is why? We have a prosperity or so, it seems. Maybe it's a short-lived prosperity, but we have a prosperity. Why do you pa pass a tax bill when you actually don't need to get the money back in the till, so to speak, because we have a prosperity anyway? Why do you do that? That's, that's a fantastic question. Fantastic question, Jay. And only Donald Trump and the Republicans really know. Because everybody else who's looked at it says this makes absolutely no sense. Uh, you don't want an economy to be overstimulated. You run the risk of inflation. Uh, you run the risk that interest rates will start going up. Uh, the economy has been growing and doing really nicely uh, since uh, the terrible recession we had. And we've been out of it for six quarters. Uh, before Trump came into power. Uh, but the Republicans have said for years that we need to cut taxes, uh, that we government shouldn't be spending as much. And, and I think the, 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 the shoe that's about to drop after this year is you're going to have to cut uh, spending. Uh, so, the, so the key has been, this has been a theory that's been uh, professed by Republicans for 40 years. Yeah. Uh, if you can't cut spending, then you ought to lower taxes and force yourself to cut spending. Yeah. So uh, it seems pretty certain uh, that we're going to have either a cut in spending or what the Treasury Department has said for many years, if you go to these low corporate rates, you're going to have to have a value added tax, which is essentially a, a, a federal uh, sales tax. Yeah. And that would be brand new, brand new idea. That would be brand new, but most countries in the world have a VAT. Yes. And when they talk about, uh, which was one of the discussions, that the corporate tax rate is too high and therefore our corporations can't be competitive worldwide, uh, they say corporate tax rates are lower in many countries. They say all countries, but most countries, it are. but they have a national sales tax and that makes up for it. And when the people in the Treasury who, at the time they were actually saying what was true, uh, they would tell you, hey, if we're going to lower corporate tax rates, we can do it, but it's got to be backed up with a value-added tax. Yeah, so we can now, expect that I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that said uh, at this time. Now that this bill's passed, what they're saying is, okay, we're going to have to lower spending, and of course, I don't know if you understand this pay pay go situation, Jay. Okay, what happens when you have a bill passed or a situation where there's something like 150 million a billion dollars over the budget, uh, then you have to start reducing line items. You have to start reducing items in every department in the country, just sort of pro rata to what their share of the income is, what their what, you know what they get for their budget. So this bill would have done it, but they passed a waiver for this bill of the PAYGO regulations because this bill increases the deficit over 10 years by one point trillion dollars. One point five, wasn't it? Almost one point. One point five trillion dollars. I think yeah. One point four five five was one legitimate estimate. One was one point four five six, and so. Now what happens is every year that 150 billion, if you divide that by 10, that's 150 billion a year, roughly. So 150 billion a year is gonna come up next year. We're gonna to get to the pay go, and we're gonna say, hey, unless we waive it next year, we're gonna to have to reduce everything across the board. And of course, the Republicans at that point will say, we're not waiving this. 
and it takes a 60 percent vote to waive it. So even if the Democrats should nominally win the House, uh, they would still not be able to make 60 percent. So they, they kind of worked it out so that the big bill this year didn't trigger the pay go. So it doesn't look like we're going to have to reduce all the spending, but it will every year for the next 10 years. And without a waiver there, we're going to get these spending cuts, which is, I think, one of the main purposes of the bill. This yes, is, you right. know, kind of choke, uh, choke the dragon, choke the big dog, because we're just spending too much in yeah. the federal government. Right. That's the real, that's one of the real purposes of this bill. Yeah, that's awful. That's and, a deception and, and on the you, public. You can, that's a huge deception on the public. Huge deception on the public. No question about that. And I, I'm reminded of when uh, uh, there was a guy who, who was on the Trump uh, transition team and uh, he became a lobbyist for a big law firm in D.C. And he was interviewed and he said, uh, uh, well, look, uh, what good is it to be a lobbyist now? Trump's going to, you know, strain the swamp and he's not going to be with his friends. And he said, oh, you got to know the difference between red meat uh, 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 fodder for the masses and reality. Red meat rhetoric and reality. He says, and Trump really knows the difference between the two. So this is a big piece of uh, red meat rhetoric, uh, but uh, uh, the big benefits all go to the wealthiest. And there's, there is some for most other people. But for example, uh, the people in the making 19 to 38 thousand dollars, they're going to save something like 380 dollars. And if you're making over 72 thousand, first year you'll save 31 thousand. Wow. Versus 380 dollars. Wow. What about so, the poor? Do the poor have a refundable credit? Do the, are the poor stand to gain anything in this deal? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And I think there is a big benefit. I, I, I don't think they're actually lying when they say everybody gets something. It's just that the rich get dramatically disproportionate more. Yeah, and the corporations. More. And so one of the good things, I think, is uh, they, they doubled the standard uh, deduction and eliminated tax exemptions, which means for those people, most people file uh, the standard deduction. So when they double the amount, there's going to be a lot fewer people who are really going to owe any taxes. And many people will get off the rolls. So uh, uh, I think that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah. But you know, what uh, you were saying a minute ago, you know, Roger, you were saying a minute ago with the rest is something else. that next year we'll, we'll, we'll have um, a re reduction in the Congress will decide, controlled by the Republicans, they'll decide they can't, they don't have enough money because of this tax reduction um, right. to, to, to do spending. <clears throat> and uh, can we unpack that for a minute? Because I've heard it said that what is spending but the social safety net? Uh, they're yeah. not, they're the same people who are getting a few bucks here in year one are not going to get the benefits from the government that they've been getting. And that might include uh, cuts in Medicare, Medicaid. Um, and other aspects of the social safety net. Am I right? You're absolutely right. In fact, one of the ways that the bill is, quote, paid for is by not uh, uh, subsidizing uh, health care for, uh, for those who can't afford it. And I think that saved a huge amount, $150 billion or $300 billion, Some big part of this was to cut that back. And that eventually will throw 13 million people out of health care. Yeah, so they may, may get a couple of hundred bucks, uh, you know, as a benefit in year one, but by the time we're in year two, three, four, and so on, um, you know, it won't be a benefit at all. They'll be underwater. Uh, and oh, I suppose uh, Social Security is also at risk, isn't it? Uh, Social Security is less at risk because the pay-go rules that I was talking about don't impact Social Security. But they do impact Medicaid and Medicare, so those will be cut further. Yeah. Now, the thing that I think is important to understand for, for those of us 
who are child, uh, children of the 60s and, and liberal and educated. Uh, this is a program that, the, that our government that has been elected has decided uh, that's not what government's for. We're not to take care of other people. You put in money so you can have uh, domestic security, so you can build roads. Uh, very nominal. You have a police force uh, to the extent you know the federal government needs to take care. These are the things that the people in control of our government believe are important. And the other things they believe are improper for the government to do. You want to have charity? Churches should do it. Individual philanthropists should do it. It shouldn't be forced on the wealthiest by the poor, by by the poorest, mm -hmm. just because there's more of them. And you know, we we we've had we've had this situation before many times. Uh, if you look back on the Industrial Revolution, uh, uh, there was the very wealthy. We had sweatshops. People worked. 14 hours a day, children work for pennies, and you know, and it was up to the employers to, to be good natured about it. Yeah. And so at some point, the pendulum swung the other way, and it kept swinging, and then it swung through the 30s during the Depression, and Roosevelt tried to drive us out of it. Then we had the war, and we got fat again after the war, and then other people in the world started getting richer, and those who had the money decided they didn't want to. They wanted to be the richest in the world, and the only way to do that was to pay lower taxes. As I said on the last show, when I started as an internal revenue agent in 1967, the highest tax rate had just come down from 90 percent to 70 percent. Now it's 39 and a half down to 37 percent. Uh, they wanted to go to 35, but they couldn't make the numbers work. Maybe they will next time. And so it just goes down until you get to a situation where we have the fabulously wealthy, the 1%, the 5% of the population that owns something like 40% uh, of all the wealth in the country, uh, uh, just disproportionately benefits. Well, you and know, so, Roger, you know, power these days seems to come out of, uh, of the Internet, social media, it comes to the people who control the Internet. I, that's, that's why uh, the Internet issue is important, I think. Um, and so the robber barons are back because they'll be yeah. able to accumulate, you know, that and the end of the uh, estate tax, at least for a while. Um, that will enable them to uh, garner, save uh, more money than ever before. And become a, a kind of new, uh, a, a new noblesse, and yeah. uh, this, this is of great concern to the country in the way of, uh, you know, an undermining of democracy. I think because you have a just a handful of people who have the money to control the voting, because we know that votes can be bought uh, through the media, and so I, yeah. I wonder your thoughts. Uh, well, first, first one one other thing I'd like to cover in this part of our discussion, and that is. Um, the, 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 the kind of small benefits that go to the middle class, those benefits expire, right, in 2025, seven years away. Um, right. but, but the big benefits go to corporations and the like that, that make the robber barons uh, all the more rich and powerful, those do not, those are permanent. Um, how do you see this changing the country? Well, it uh, depends on how we respond. These are the times, Jay. These are the times. Uh, uh, Trump was elected with uh, about half the vote, a little bit less. He's got a base of a third of the country that thinks he's doing no wrong. Uh, those are some of the poorest and some of the richest. Now, uh, fortunately, uh, we still have an election that comes up every two years for the House of Representatives, every four years for the president, and every six years for the Senate. And where, where does the country want to go? We have reached uh, uh, a point where, uh, uh, with Citizens United, where there's an unlimited amount of money that can be placed on a, on a, in an election. Uh, money is totally, completely in control. Even if you look at the, the Democrats, if you see the, the, the uh, emails that come across, 
All they talk about is we got to have 100,000 to meet this date. We got to, what are you talking about? That's not a vote. How does money looks like a vote for everybody? Yep. So uh, could we get to a system that first takes the money out of it? That's extremely difficult because even if you took the money out of the individual's elections, you still have the big organizations that can put in money for other kinds of ads. But nevertheless, we could do well with that. And secondly, do people believe what you say? That the important part of the United States is the ability to start with nothing and move your way up in the system through education and hard work? Or are we gonna have a class system where you're born rich? One of the things about the estate tax, it made it very much more difficult to have this aristocracy of the rich because you had to pay a huge amount in what you'd accumulated. Now, if I had that and I had a hundred billion dollars, why would I want to give the government forty billion instead of my kids? But yeah. what's what what philosophy do we want right yeah. now? We're we've moved to Reagan, Bush, Trump. That's been the progression for the Republicans. Yeah, and uh, and you might look at the Democrats and say we went you know from Kennedy to Clinton to Obama, who was much more concerned about the underclass. Yeah. So, and Roger, so let's, it, let's it, take it. We're going to have to take a small break. But uh, when we come back, I, I would like to um, talk about the economics, the, the macroeconomics that flow out of this, uh, okay. out of the, the fact that we are you know, doing this tax break um, at a time when we are in prosperity, uh, at a time when we were going to be spending more on infrastructure, when we need to, you know, need to help people who are underprivileged. Um, uh, and so we're going to have a profound effect on this. And, and you mentioned last time the possibility of inflation. So I'd like to cover that. I'd also like to cover a few of the salient uh, changes that affect um, individuals who will be filing tax returns soon enough. And maybe even some last minute planning now, <laughs> between now and the okay. end of the year. We've okay. got a lot to talk about. That's Roger Epstein. Um, he's a, a retired tax lawyer, and he's the vice president and co-founder of um, Asia Pacific Group. Okay, we're talking about the status and effects of the tax reform bill, the good and a lot of the bad. We'll be right back with Roger after this break. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together, working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. We're back. Roger Epstein on the other side. He's in New York City. He joins us by Skype. He's a retired tax lawyer, vice president, co-founder of the uh, Asia Pacific Group, which is important. And we're talking about the tax reform bill. Um, and let's unpack some of the provisions first, Roger. Uh, what, what should we take away in terms of the changes of things that we've been, become used to over the last several decades? Well, uh, we briefly covered uh, the fact that uh, the brackets have changed, yes. and uh, essentially, Jay, uh, the bracket changes reduce each bracket by two to four percent. So, uh, and, but the brackets have changed a little bit. But essentially, you could figure you're gonna your your bracket's going to go down two to two or three percent, and so that will save a little bit of money. Uh, and of course. If you're way over the brackets and you're really making a lot of money, it saves you a lot more. Secondly, the corporate rates have dropped from 35% to 21%. That's a 40% drop, the largest in history. Uh, there's also a break for small businesses 
who are in uh, S corporations and pass through entities, they essentially get a 20% uh, reduction of their, of their income. And then there's a number of limitations, but essentially it's designed so that if you're in business and the owners of business will be down to something close to the 21% rate that corporations are gonna pay. Now for individual shareholders, there was a lot of discussion about um, uh, doing away with uh, the uh, state taxes, state and local taxes. What they did with that was to cap it so that your state and local taxes can't exceed $10,000 a year. So that's the combination of your property taxes and your state taxes. And all of a sudden you asked for what to do before the end of the year. <laughs> There's a huge discussion, in fact, action by many states to allow people to pay their state taxes, property taxes and or income taxes in advance. So that if you pay now when there's no limitation, you can deduct it in your 2017 return. What about Hawaii? What about uh, Hawaii, Roger? What okay. about Hawaii? Can I do that in Hawaii? You can do that in Hawaii. Uh, I don't know how far in advance you could pay your your taxes, uh, but you certainly can pay what you owe in advance, and you can certainly pay anything you owe for income taxes in 2017. For 2000, you can pay that right away. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there's a possibility to pay your 2018 taxes right away, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if people tried. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, I did read uh, that in New Jersey and New York, uh, they were trying to pass rules uh, to allow uh, substantial advance payments. Mm -hmm. So the next tax, the next item for uh, the average person is interest on your your home home mortgage so it, it's been uh, that you can deduct interest payments on your home mortgage and a vacation home up to a million dollars now they've reduced it uh for new it's grandfathered if you're already in so whatever your interest payments are up to a million dollars of mortgage you can deduct that from your on your itemized deduction list uh, but uh, if you're just buying a new house, now it's going to be limited uh, to 750000 and eventually $500,000 uh, uh, for, for mortgage payments. And there's been some discussion about, well, that's going to discourage people from buying houses. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it's a big enough disincentive. Everybody wants to own their own house. And to the extent they get any tax break, that's going to be good. Mm -hmm. What I worry more about, and this is something you alluded to, is the fact that uh, the big reduction in taxes, the big $1.5 trillion worth of benefits are going to the richest people who then can bid up the cost of housing. Yeah. We see this in Hawaii, uh, down in Kaka'ako, where it's the wealthiest people in the world who are buying those high rises. And the few Hawaii people who can get in are those who are in the housing market and have retired and their houses have gone up and now they're downsizing. And that's who's buying that. So I think we're gonna see more of that. And I think it, it isn't a concern of this administration, the gap between the rich and the poor. It's not a concern. Uh, it's a big concern for the other side. Yeah. And that's why I said before, we'll see where these, where it ends up. Yeah. Or let how me, far let it goes. Me, uh, go to the last uh, really major point, and that is, uh, and we, you and I talked about this before. So all of a sudden, you know, you have 1.5 trillion dollars in the corporate till, theoretically, at least over 10 years. Um, yeah. And now th this could create inflation. Do you still feel that way? Uh, is there going to be exactly. inflation? Remember the trickle down, the trickle down effect. You know the Republicans are hoping for a trickle down effect. I think that happened with Calvin Coolidge, and it didn't work very well. We wound up in, in a depression over trickle down. So can trickle down work? Can it work here? Will it work now? Well, what the what the corporations have said. If you believe the guys who are going to get the money, the big corporate people, they've said they're going to spend. The, the, the difference between 35% and 21% on, 
on three items, paying dividends to their shareholders, redeeming stock from their shareholders, and mergers and acquisitions. So clearly the dividends that go to their shareholders, which are still at a lower rate, still paying 20% on the dividends. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to have uh, uh, that much more money in the hands of people who don't need to spend it. So they're not going to stimulate the economy by spending it. They're just going to do it by buying more things, which are going to push the prices up as far as I can tell. Buying back the stock has the same impact. You buy it back at a capital gain rate. You pay little tax on that or substantially less than you pay on working person's income. And then mergers and acquisitions reduce the uh, uh, competition, uh, reduce the number of jobs, and uh, uh, again, consolidate the power in the hands of fewer and fewer. Yeah. You know, one thing that strikes me is, um, you know, as, as we go forward here, um, the national debt will, will grow. Um, and there'll be a price to pay, if not in inflation, then in an inability to have the sufficient funds necessary to rebuild uh, infrastructure and the like. Um, and, you know, I just, I, I wonder um, whether it's possible to reverse this, quote, tax reform bill, um, you know, in the, in the realities of, of, of the politics going forward. Um, it's not as if you can switch this around, is it? It's not as if uh, the Democrats get in and they can return to the good old days. Um, this is history now. It happened. Yeah. It is happening yeah. to us. Yeah. Query, no question, what Dave. happens if, we, if, 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 the, if Congress should change? Are we going to be able to return to where we were? I don't think so. I think uh, if we are, it's only because of a, a continued, determined effort to change things around. And, and, and maybe we need to look for different solutions instead of changing things around. You know, in the 60s, the government did expand dramatically because of the, the South being unwilling to change their civil rights policy. You had the federal government taking things over. There's a lot of truth in the fact that it's a, a, a one size fits all is not a good thing for this country. And so do we want the federal government to go back and grow? Now, my thinking, and I've been talking with some people in Hawaii, uh, what does Hawaii do in the Trump era? Federal taxes are going down. Well, people are gonna have a little more money. Maybe we need to spend it in Hawaii. Maybe we need a concerted effort to get together with just a million two hundred thousand people. The state of Hawaii is in a position to say, what do we want ourselves to look like? Are we going to have to pay some of the federal tax money back in state tax, which is a better way to spend it because you get a deduction from your federal taxes, even if your federal taxes are lower, you get some benefit. So. I've been encouraging people, and I'd like to see you, who have such a big influence on this, start thinking about getting the people that do your shows to think about what does Hawaii look like in the Trump era? Are we going to go back? No, it's so much easier to reduce taxes than to raise taxes. You know, what they did with this bill is they give everybody a quarter and take $5. In fact, it's, it's the 1%, Jay, if you had 100 people and you had them in the proportion of the, 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 the people in the United States, you got $100 to give to 100 people, the one, the guy, the 1%, the one guy gets eight bucks. The next four guys, they get eight bucks too. <laughs> then everybody else begins to split whatever's left. When you get down to the lowest, I think 75%, they each get 45 cents. There you go. So, so they say to the, to the, you know, the red meat rhetoric, hey, you got 45 cents. What the hell are you complaining about? <laughs> right. Now, are you going to turn around and go back and say, give me back your 45 cents? Give me back your $8? It's, you know, Roger, it's a heck of a lot harder. This is going to play out in such interesting ways because there'll be all kinds of economic and social implications going forward. We can predict now, but I guarantee things will happen that we don't completely predict. And I think you and I have to get together, uh, you know, from time to time and, and check it out, how this bill is actually affecting the, the public fisc, um, you know, the government spending and the social structure, and for that matter, democracy in the country, Roger. 
So let's plan Absolutely. on getting, getting together again, yeah? Jay, I, uh, you and I talked about maybe doing a show in the new year called What Does Hawaii Look Like in the Trump Era? Yes. What do we want Hawaii to look like? Yes. And bring on some people. You know, it's time, in my view, to think out of the box. Yes. Can we go back to what did, did, were things so great before this tax bill was passed? We had a lot of issues. Maybe we have to think about better ways uh, to do things then just throw money at it. Uh, we've got a we've got a criminal justice system in Hawaii. We're gonna we just went through this whole mess with the train. We're still going through it. Now we're gonna build another prison for a billion dollars or six hundred million. And and where are we gonna get the money when at time after time it's been shown that if you had prison uh, criminal justice reform, you could save a ton of money and get more people uh, uh, not as, you know take them off the the, the recidivism list, sure. and so I think we got to start thinking a little more intelligently yes, we gotta think instead smart. of just money. Yes. And one other thing, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in one other thing. You know, the baby boomers are getting older, and they've got a ton of money. And in Hawaii, people have a lot of money and and some leisure time. Volunteerism could be a very important thing in our community. If we figured out more ways to have volunteers, maybe even volunteer to do things for the government. Yeah, you know, maybe if, even volunteers if, do things for ThinkTech. Um, but yeah. Volunteers do things for ThinkTech. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, I'm just saying this may be, uh, and here's one thing to think about. Uh, uh, a dollar is uh, only has value uh, to the extent we give it value. And so it's not an, an absolute kind of thing. And one example I'd love to use is when I worked for the federal government in the 60s uh, in Washington, they passed a raise for the, all the government workers, which was, you know, 60% of the city. The parking lot the next day went up by a dollar. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we didn't even get the money. And it went up by a dollar. So if you put out more money, inflation can eat it up. Yeah. But if you spend an hour of your time doing something good, it's an hour of your time. Yeah. It's a fixed amount. Yeah. It doesn't change no matter what. It's not a relative value. Ah, but uh, time cha times have changed. This bill changes things one way or the other. We're going to see a lot of changes come out of this. So I look forward yeah. to talking right. to you again. Roger, Roger Epstein, uh, a former tax attorney and the vice, pre vice president and co-founder of the Asia Pacific Group. Uh, I so appreciate you coming on the show, Roger. My pleasure. Next time we can talk about China and what they're doing in the age of Trump. Absolutely. That's where my, that's where my Asia Pacific Group has an office. Okay. Thank you. Jay, Roger. it's been a lot of fun, happy and I'm happy to come talk to you anytime. Happy New Year. Talk soon. Bye -bye.